Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about static variables, what they are, what they do, why you'd want to use them, and how to use them to control the code execution in your procedures. Today's question comes from Oscar in Burien, Washington, one of my Platinum members. Oscar says, I just watched your select text on click video and it works great. Thank you. You're welcome. However, if I do want to edit some text in the middle of that field, is there a way I can have it so the code doesn't run the second time you click on that field? Yes, it's definitely possible if you know how to make the code remember that it just ran on that field a minute ago. And I'll show you how with a static variable. But first, let me explain to everybody else what you're talking about. All right, so for everybody else, if you haven't watched this select text on click video, go watch this first. Essentially, this allows you to make a field in Access behave like a cell in Microsoft Excel. All right, normally the way Access works is when you click on a cell, it just puts your cursor right there wherever you click. But sometimes, especially if you usually overwrite what's in that cell, you want it to behave more like Excel does, so that if you click on a cell, it highlights the whole thing, see? But you can achieve that through tabbing, but a lot of people, they like to use the mouse. So you want to be able to click here and just type over it. Okay, but the problem is, is that it's hard now to then click a second time and put the cursor right where you want it. See, every time I click, it still highlights the entire cell. So what Oscar is saying is, hey, is it possible so that when I click on it, it selects the whole cell, but the second time I click on it, it then lets me put the cursor where I want, which you can't really easily do right now. Now, the way that we could do this is to simply have access remember that I just clicked on this particular field a moment ago, and this is the second click. Okay, now how do we accomplish this code? Well, we created a function in the last video called select all, sell all. All right, and if we go into our code editor, let's find it. Where's select all? Is it in this form? No, I think we put it in the global module. Yep, there it is right there, right? screen.activecontrol.cell start. So that says whatever the active control is, right? We're going to set the selection start to zero. That's before the first character. And we're going to set the selections length equals the length of the text in that field. And that is what selects the entire block of text. Now, what we have to do to get this to work the way Oscar wants is we have to tell the select all function, hey, you got to remember what the last field the user clicked on was. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, okay? You could use a global variable. You could use a hidden form field somewhere, like on the main menu. You could use temp vars, especially if you're Adam, you're gonna use temp vars. But <laughs> static variables are probably the best thing to use here because a static variable only lives in this function, but it remembers its value between function calls. All right, so you declare it here. If you don't have global variables cluttering your database, you don't want too many global variables because they get hard to keep track of. You know, you might accidentally reuse it somewhere else. They're just a pain, okay? But a static variable only exists inside this function. So only this function can use it and read its value, which is what you want here, okay? But it's, it's less cluttering in the database too. And yeah, temp vars will work, but eh, temp vars have their place. I think a static variable is probably best for this one. So how do we set this up here? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a static variable, static. It's, it's declared with the word static, right? And what do we want? Well, we want to remember what the last clicked on control was. Okay, so we'll call it last clicked control. And that's gonna be a string. It's gonna be the name of a field, okay? And yes, technically you could have the same field name on multiple forms, I get it. But I think for the purposes of this, this should work just fine. Yeah, if you click on the same named field on two different forms, the code is not going to run. But it's not going to make a big difference. If you want to get more creative and add the form name in here too, sure you can. But I think this is just fine. Okay, now we want to say if the last clicked control is not the same as screen dot active control dot name. That's the name of the field that the user just clicked on. Okay, if that's different, oops, we need a then. If that's different than what the last click control was, then it's okay to run this code. 
because they're moving from field to field to a different field. Or the first time this initializes, it's going to be null. And so this will run the first time. Okay, so now we're going to put this code inside of this if then block. All right, one more important thing we have to do though, once this code runs, now we have to set that value. Right, we're going to say last click control equals the screen dot active control name, right? So first time it runs, it's going to check and say, okay, what was the last active control? Oh, you're null. Okay, so this is not going to be the same as that. Run the code, set last click control to first name, whatever you're on. Okay, good. Now the user clicks on first name a second time, but this time last click control equals the screen dot active control name. So this code won't run and access will behave just like it normally does. Okay. All right, so let's save it. Always throw in a debug compile. Come back out, meow. Let's close this, close this, open it back up again. Now, the first time I click on my email field, the code runs. Second time I click on it, oh, look at that. My cursor's right in that little spot right there, right? Do the same thing up here, click. See, click down here, click up here, click over there, click in here, click here a second time, and there you go. Isn't that pretty? That's the benefit of a static variable, though. This variable is going to remember its value between calls this function. Okay, so that's when you'd use that. This, this only exists, it only has scope in this function, so no one else can see it, but it has a lifetime of the entire application. Okay, or until a, a VB error is thrown, but don't worry about that. If, if you have to survive VB errors, use a temp var. But I think for this particular function, that's kind of overkill because it really doesn't matter. If you get an error and you come back here, oh, oh okay, GUO is me. I have to click a second time now. Okay, it's still going to be fine though. All right, so there's your code. I'll put some other links to some other videos down below if you want to learn more about variables and scope. I got videos for those. And if you like learning with me, come check out my developer lessons on my website. I've got, uh, I think I'm up to 45 right now. We start from developer level one, we take it nice and slow, we teach you all the introduction, statements, procedures, parameters, if then statements, all that good stuff, and by the time you get to the end, well, you're just as good as me. Almost, you gotta practice. I got a little practice under my belt, but you can get just as, it's just as good. It's not hard, folks, it's not hard. But there you go, there's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. 
I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.